So things were going pretty well, but... Were they? Really? Well, okay. Maybe they weren't. Maybe things were kind of going bad. So things weren't going well, and we weren't happy with how the footage was looking, how performances were. So we took about six months off to figure things out and part of ways with our camera guy and looked for ways to get our own uh, equipment. And we got some amazing, amazingly generous uh, donations that allowed us to get a camera. And we went out and filmed a short film called Every Rose Has Its Thorn uh, as a sort of a camera test. Uh, and to kind of figure things out for ourselves. We ended up not liking that camera at all and went out and got a different camera and came back to the project a few months later with all new knowledge and kind of doing things for ourselves now and kind of taking, taking control of the situation. And from there on out, things went so much better. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ow, motherfucker. <laughs> Just drop it. Don't toss it. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I can tell they hit you on one of the balls. So, right about half of the film takes place in a, a mental hospital that James is incarcerated in, the way he sees it anyway. Uh, we had found, thankfully, uh, a nursing home that had still attached to it a surgery wing back when it was a hospital. It had been closed since uh, God, late in the 60s, I think. Yeah. As soon as we opened the door, we literally were like, this is it. <laughs> we'll take it. You know, it was like it was like Ghostbusters when Ray falls in love with the firehouse because of the pool. We're like, we'll take it. Cut that snort out, please. That was an accident. I'm leaving best. it in. You bastard. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this place was, it had this really awesome green kind of hue. The floor, like, well, I mean, you see it in the film, but you don't know what we had to go through to get that clean. It took... Uh, clean's not the right word. You don't know how we had to go through to get that ready for the film. Uh, it took months of prep work of us in there with mops and brooms and Clorox pads and trash bags. It was amazing uh, the amount of things we had to move because it was stuff that was still left over from the hospital, whether it be beds or I think at one point a kitchen sink. There were um, uh, toilets strapped to walkers with buckets under them. Like I don't even know what those are for. We had to convert an entire space into a rec room. Uh, including mounting a TV on the wall, which didn't go well for Not a while. so much. We, it, uh, we actually don't have any s skills or abilities as like craftsmen or... Yeah, we're really useless as males go. Uh, I believe we ended up duct taping uh, a lot of it to the wall. I, I believe that you can see in the, the finished film that that TV is duct taped uh, to the wall. But we got it out there. Yeah. Not in post. Come here, baby. You know you drive me up a wall The way you make good for the nasty tricks you pull Seems like we're making up more than we're making love And it always seems you got something on your mind other than me Girl, you got to change your crazy ways You hear me? Say you're leaving And the man that you bludgeoned to death with a folding chair How do you think he feels? Tiger face. Ah, lemon face. Ooh, tiger face. Ah, lemon face. Okay, I'm ready. Yes, flying. The Wright brothers have been doing it for 500 years. Why is it such a hard concept for you to handle? No, seriously though, Bob was fucked up. Uh, there were times I would come in and there'd be like 12 dead hookers around his foot. One foot. He'd be standing on one foot with a bunch of dead hookers uh, and a fucking paintbrush threatening to cut me with it. I don't know how. I'm starting to think maybe he just never washed them. So they got hard as hell, and then he would use those as stabbing instruments. He was really messed up in the head, and uh, I'm gonna miss him. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, c I could remember a time, uh, used to be, oh, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 years ago, when, uh, you know, when the young folk, they had a problem, they would not light it up or bring it on. They would not even uh, uh, 
but they would not even stomp the yard as it were. Uh, that's just not how things was handled back in you know my time. We would uh, basically, when two men had a problem, they would just go fisticuff until one man could not stand back up. And uh, you know that's when men was men. There was none of these uh, young hooligans running around all the time with uh, the crazy death. Basically, I don't believe you should dance when you're pissed off. Uh, that's not how you solve a problem. I think you should. You know, basically just whoop the shit out of somebody else until the problem is resolved, I think. Doctor, one thing I've learned, truly learned. It's a line. I really think that sometimes if you want something to work, that thought um, through quantum teleportation is turned into a particle and that particle goes out and it interacts with other particles and see the thing is you, you've got to understand something called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle which in, in simple terms so that anyone can understand is the fact that you cannot predict the sort of interaction that things will have there's a randomness to it and so when, when something's about to happen in physics, it either has happened or it hasn't, and that's called a superposition. It's multiple positions at once, and until you measure it, it is any of those possible situa uh, positions, but when you measure it, it is committed to one. And so, by doing that, it causes all of these things to happen in a cascade where you want it to be a particular position. And so then, when it's measured, guess what? That's the one it is. And I wanted this movie to work. And then, here comes Christopher Robin. I hate, I hate the concept of fixing anything in post. It gives me nightmares. That's Christopher, he's the lighting guy now. Hi. Hello, flip camera? Yes, say hi to the viewers, yay. I am Christopher Alley. I am the director. <clears throat> this is off to a smashing start. Uh, would you like that delivered to you or to camera? Christopher Alley. I'm the director of photography for James vs. Reality. Uh, I was getting ready to move to Oregon from Florida. And uh, as part of that process, I just started kind of uh, looking around on the internet and um, Craigslist, other things just kind of putting out feelers and seeing what was happening in production in the sort of Portland metro area. Through that uh, process, I managed to get in touch with a guy. We were doing the institution scenes in Longview. I put out a Craigslist ad looking for any sort of lighting help. And uh, someone responded from Florida with just some, some nice little tips on uh, low budget or no budget lighting. This individual turned out to be Christopher Wilson. So after a flurry of, of emails and things, I actually did move to Oregon and promptly never heard from anybody about anything. And then I think, I think Wilson was cleaning out his junk mail folder or something and stumbled across an email and said, hey, maybe I should just email this jackass back again, see what's going on. And somehow we got back in touch with each other right as they were leading up to the, um, to the process of reshooting the institution interiors. Look at the fucking team effort as the Christophers dustpan and, and broom skadoosh. Look at that. Christopher Alley came on board and the entire scope of the film changed. The entire quality of the film changed. The guy works wonders, really, and uh, was infinitely patient at the beginning and infinitely helpful still. Uh, he's turned out to be not only a phenomenal director of photography and lighting expert and rigging guy and camera operator, but a wonderful friend as well. Have you seen a movie called Miami Vice? Um, Christopher Alley actually he will made that. kill you for doing that. Making the movie with Chris and Tim is a lot like going to Disney World with a five-year-old who's never been. You get to see all of the things that you know backwards and forwards, but you see them again through a child's eyes. Experience the wonder anew. 
That's what James versus reality was like. But without food. And a lot more mold and crazy people.